Welcome back. We're going to do a quick rundown on a new gun that's here in the armory, the Breda 92X Performance. Um, I posted about this on our Instagram yesterday or last night possibly. Uh, this came in a few days ago. This is the uh, Beretta 92 that is a that you can also run cocked and locked. So it is a you can work it as a where's the camera at? DA gun. So DASA as you like that or once you're in single action, you can lock it back like a 1911. So you can ride the, uh, you can even ride the thumb safety. It has ambi uh, controls. I mean, this this is a known gun. They're kind of hard to get, but just because of COVID, I mean, this isn't like something special. But I uh, wanted to go through some of it just because I'm, I'm getting a fair amount of questions and just, you know, just just run down real quick. So the, um, the first thing is it does come, this at least this example comes with uh, two magazines. Uh, I was a little surprised. Uh, they came with 15 round, uh, 15 round uh, Bread 92 magazines. Um, when I had a Bread 92 back in 1990, um, this gun they had they had 15 round magazines, but um, I actually had heard that they had gone to uh, 17s. So, but just you know, keep in mind these come with 15s. Only two of them. I can't guarantee this is, you know, every example of this gun comes with a. Uh, comes with two, but uh, maybe they come with three, but this one came with two. It's a pretty unusual situation. So um, it's a production gun. It's nothing fancy. It's not, I mean, it looks, I mean, the gun looks, I mean, I mean, look at that thing. It looks fantastic. If you're into the Berettas, like that color and, you know, all the uh, the blacked out control control surfaces with the blacked up arrow and the, and the, uh, the furniture on the back of it. I mean, the gun, you know, what do they say in, in the uh, housing industry? This says curb appeal. You know, yeah, this has curb appeal. So it looks pretty good, um, but it is not a gun that's been, you know, it's not a custom fit gun. It's not a gun that's been dehorned. Um, it's fairly sharp, uh, in particular, just as a, just to prove the point, I am fairly certain here at the front of the rail, that corner right there, I could easily draw blood with that. I mean, I could very easily. This gun is, it's like a box of doll razor blades. However, the good news is I have to give them props the front, the, the cocking serrations on the slide on this gun, the cocking serrations, man, are fantastic. These things are just, they are, they're a million bucks. I mean, they just, they're real easy to work, real easy to manipulate. And, you know, I think, um, I think that's, that's a win. However, in my opinion, and you've just seen me do that, more than likely with this gun, if you're against front cocking serrations, you're probably going to be a front cocking serrations guy because there's so much going on at the rear of the gun with, you know, with control surfaces and even the um, uh, extended slide stop and, and, and even the, the rear sight, and, you know, with the hammer, there's just not a whole lot of room realistically to grab back there. This gun is operated from the front, in my opinion. So, um, but I really, that's a, you know, that could have been a big loser on this gun, considering the uh, cut open slides that the Berettas are famous for, you actually have less surface area, but man, I think that's, that's really, that's just, that's just fantastic. So also along those lines, checkering on the back of the gun is dynamite. I love aggressive checkering. Um, it does have, if I can get this on film here, um, the, it does have a short grip. I have large-ish, large, -ish, large I wouldn't say I have large hands, I would say I have large-ish hands. So, and this gun, basically the grip on it is like a Glock 19, so it's a little short. So, you know, on a Glock 19, if I'm not careful, I could easily split my hand open if I get a, you know, fold of skin between the uh, magazine base pad and the bottom of the gun. I knew that going in when I got this gun, so I've already determined I'm gonna have a magwell put on the bottom of it anyway, but just something to keep in mind. And with that said, let's go ahead and address this. Yeah, it's a big gun, it's a heavy gun, but it's no bigger than any other Beretta. It's the same size. Here's a Beretta uh, 92D model, police trade-in. It's a Beretta 92. It's not any larger than, you know, basically any other Beretta you've ever seen. And actually, while we're on the subject, it is about the same size as the Wilson EDC X9L, you know, the five inch 1911. So, and 
what do you know? Full-sized practical tactical Glock, same size gun. You know, the grip's a little bit, you know, the, the Glock, the grip is a little bit longer than on the, uh, on the Beretta. So I guess my argument is this seems like a big gun on the internet. It's not that big of a gun. It's, it's definitely dense, but if you are somebody who wants to uh, possibly carry this gun, if you like full-size guns, I don't think this is going to be a problem for you. Um, you may want to wait because I'm willing to bet money that Beretta is going to come out with a carry version of this format of gun with an aluminum frame. I have no, no reason. They have not told me that. I have no inside speculation or in, inside knowledge, but my speculation is, of course, they will because basically the Beretta 92, the one thing that's killed that gun for 30 years has been the uh, the thumb safety on the slide. So having finally having a frame mounted thumb safety that you can ride like a 1911, that's a huge win on this gun. Um, let's see here. What are the uh, other issues here? Uh, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about how the safety works for a minute. This is probably going to be an issue for people. Um, so hammer down. You know, DA first pull. You know, recoils fire goes into semi-automatic mode so now you're you can do cocked and locked there is no decocker on this gun so how you would have to decock this gun is strip it out well let's go ahead and do it how you would decock this gun is either you could strip it out which some people don't want to do or you can actually you'd have to lower the hammer on you know, onto the gun, and some people don't like that. However, with this gun, it's a little bit, it's a, probably a little bit easier. Pay attention, those of you that are familiar, familiar with Berettas, firing pin block up here at the top. So lock the hammer back, pull the, uh, pull the trigger, let the hammer go forward a little bit, release the trigger. You now have a firing pin block that's between your hammer and the back of your primer. So it's not going to hit it's not going to hit the uh not going to hit the primer in the bullet additionally there is a half cock so there's three things between you know you work in the back of this gun and you have it an ad again not as safe as probably what you know your local law uh, you know ad administrative staff or command staff would approve of but it, it is i think i think this is a i think this is a manageable gun as far as you know decocking it if you're really into that kind of thing. So um, obviously Picatinny Rail, 1913. I mean, that's with uh, what's been going on with the past uh, few days with uh, US, is it USPSA? I can't, I get them confused. I know it's not IDPA, but I never know which way it is. I guess IDPA or USPSA or IPSIG, USPSA is now gonna allow, uh, they've upped the weights for some of their guns. They have, they're now allowing weapon lights on some of their guns. They're allowing um, appendix carry, which is a huge win for the heavy guns. A lot of people who don't carry appendix don't realize that, but you know, I think having the, the heavier weight closer in to your, in, you know, the girdle of your body, the footprint of the, the, the center of gravity of your body, I think it carries better as opposed to being real lopsided out on the outside of the hips. So, you know, this could, this, maybe this is a gun that has a future in that kind of competition. I don't really shoot that kind of stuff, but you know, something to consider. Um, it does have, as I did say, extended controls. Now, is this, this is a gamer gun. Again, I like bigger guns, so I could carry this gun, but let me go ahead and show this here. The takedown lever, right there, if you can see that, that actually is designed, it's got a large ledge on it that works as a little mini gas pedal. If you don't know what a gas pedal is, you're not into the you're not into the pistol games, and some of the games allow the gas pedal, some of them don't. Some of them really exaggerate the gas pedals. But this is designed for a thumbs forward shooting position. You can put your support hand right there against that, that, lock, that takedown lever, which also works as a gas pedal. So now you have double pressure, plus you, you, know, you get your grip. And this is a potential to be a very flat shooting gun when you add in the weight. So pretty interesting. So. Wow, you could make the argument that, you know, well, you know, that's all gamer stuff. Well, features we see on guns 25 years ago that were gamer guns now show up as RFPs on service pistols. So it is the future. Um, incidentally, 
this little this little area right here, bump right here on the Glock frame, you'll notice a lot of people stipple this or even maybe they'll put a, they'll, uh, they'll exaggerate with a heat iron, the ledge right there, because they will use that as a gas pedal um, unofficially to also keep the muzzle flip down on the gun. So, you know, those of you are throwing stones at gas pedals, but you know, running your Glock like that, you know, you're living in a glass house. Oh, I guess as far as the size of the grip is concerned, you know, it does have grip panels on it. Uh, you can, uh, you know, I guess you, they come off with screws. There is in the uh, box a a different grip for a large, you know, for a larger, you know, I guess it put, I guess there's, this can do, serve two purposes. Number one, the original Berettas have more of a, a hump in the back of them. And this, I think they might call this the vertex type grip. I like that flat grip. However, if I wanted, if this, if the size of this grip is, is too much and I don't, and I can't find a magwell solution, I could in theory put this grip on it. It would raise my hand up so it doesn't hang off the bottom of the gun, which shows right here on the bottom of this, of this 92, 92D, it's, it's, a, it's a lot better. I mean, I'm not, when I put the mags in, I'm not in danger of pinching my hand, so. Um, I guess one more kind of, if I was gonna give Opinion. The double action pull on the 92X is better than this uh, police trade in 92D, but I think it's close enough that I don't think it makes much of a difference. I think. Um, this gun has such a significantly better pull than it left the factory because it's had thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through it and dry fires. One wonders what the double action pull on this gun would be, say in you know, 5,000 rounds. So I think it might, would it wear in or be better? Or maybe it's got this weird, you know, this, this whatever the silver treatment on it is, maybe, that, maybe it wouldn't wear in at all. So anyway, that's um, pretty much all I got on this gun. And if uh, you're interested in picking up one of these Italian 1911s, which is kind of what they are, if Beretta made a 1911, this would be it. They're out there on the market. Um, people are getting above retail for them, so I would not pay that. We did not pay above retail for this, but again, unusual situation. I'll share that for a story any other time. If you want to see any more pictures or stories or links of this gun or any others, go to our website, john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun, everybody. Have a good day.